सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली नीदरलैंड और द नीदरलैंड द नीदरलैंड बिकॉज लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ द कंट्री एक्चुअली लाइज बिलो द सी लेवल दैट्स वाई एम्स्टरडाम विच हैज टू बी प्रोटेक्टेड बाई डैम्स फ्रॉम बैक फ्लोर्स ऑफ सी वॉटर फ्रॉम कमिंग इन सो द नीदरलैंड इज जस्ट कॉन टू द पोल्स देव हैड देयर रिजल्ट वाई आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट इट इट्स नॉट ए कंट्री दैट इज सो इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर इंडिया स्ट्रेटेजिकली इन टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ पार्टनरशिप्स इट ऑल्सो डज नॉट sit in any of the geographies that are that are of any particularly great importance to india country like india every part of the world is important also so much of the netherlands that we know or that we deal with is done through the eu window why is the netherlands important now and why is the result of this netherlands election so significant what is happening in europe is that a wave of right wing populism is sweeping it now in europe if you look closely sometimes it's very difficult to say what is right wing what is left wing populism for example if i see if i say who's one in certain countries the descriptions are reader like oh so and so is a left wing populist but a nationalist of the right so this is like political this is like political parties confect a new kind of populism where they pick the worst from all ideologies the worst from the left and the right and from the religion and from nationalism when you combine all of that and you bring in a lot of nativism and hyper nationalism that becomes the new populism so today's ism in europe that is now sweeping europe again and again country after country that is populism so what's happened in the netherlands election is that a populist has got the largest number of seats his name is heert wilders g e e r t pronounced heert and i checked that on google so heert wilders names from the netherlands or the dutch names netherlands by the way is known by three names you can you, you say dutch a uh, dutch in your conversation so and so is a dutch person right the dutch football team dutch hockey team dutch cricket team also now it's called netherlands the netherlands it's also called holland so it's a small country with many names of country of just about 1.76 crore people that's a little over half the population of delhi very rich country per capita income of 69000 now in that country election system is not like india it is not first past the post system in fact in many parts of europe the system followed is a proportionate representation so you are allocated seats on the basis of how many votes you've secured in the general election so just as the current slogan in indian politics is jitni jiski abadi utna uska haq that you get you get rights or share of the national pie based on your population this is proportionate representation in the election is jitne aapke vote utna aapka haq that you get power in proportion to how many votes you've got so in in the netherlands if first they count how many numbers of votes have been counted there are 150 seats in parliament then you count the total number of votes cast by 150 that becomes your quota number now anybody who has that much number suppose if you look at 2020 bar elections then if you divided the total number of votes cast by by 150 it came to about 69000 so that became your quota seats then all the seats that a party received would be counted it will then be divided by say 69000 whatever the number you achieve there that will be the number of seats allocated to you so it's a bit complex as it as, as we look at it what what it also does is it makes it very difficult for any party to get a clear majority so what's happened in the netherlands now is that a party that nobody had expected to rise to such a level that has made a spectacular gain and that party has increased its vote share now if you want to see the see the base in the netherlands the base is not that high so this party had 11% of the vote the last time 
Now they've got 23.5% of the vote. Now 23.5% of the vote, you say, you, you might say it's not too much, but the party next to it has 15.5%. The party after that has 15.1%. And the party after that has 12.8%. Accordingly, seats have been divided amongst them. The largest party, PVV or the Freedom Party, has 23.5% of the vote and 37 members in a house of 150. If you look at the numbers closely, then 37 doesn't sound like such a big number. It's actually one less than being a half of the halfway mark in parliament. So, so it's, a, so it's about one fourth of the Dutch parliament. But since this is the largest party, chances of this party of being able to form a coalition with other parties are greater. Now, now the important aspect is not the party, but its leader. That is Heath. Wilders. Heath Wilders is 61. He is probably the most right-wing leader in Europe today. Each time a right-wing leader rises in Europe now, we think, oh, we've now seen the most right-wing leader in Europe that we've seen in a long time. But each new one actually is further to the right of that. We saw Marine Le Pen in France who hasn't won power, but she's right-wing and they, they talk a certain language. They haven't won power yet. They are hoping now that Macron will be weaker and they'll be able to They'll be able to make bigger gains. But more important, we saw Giorgia Meloni win in Italy. We featured her victory and her politics in a full episode of Cut the Clutter, of which I will share a link with you. And she rode the same horse that populists are now riding in Western countries. That is against Muslim immigrants, against Islam and its practices. All of this is part of the package, part of the buffet, against asylees, people seeking asylum, against political correctness against new definitions of gender, against the idea that you can transition from one gender to the other, etc. That's exactly the same language that Putin talks also, except that Putin has no stress about being elected or about being or about being defeated in a, in a future election. These European leaders, however, are beginning to speak that language. So Heath Wilders, if anything, speaks language which makes him, which positions him to the right of even, even Giorgio even Giorgia Meloni. The top item on his ideology is quite surprising and that's why it's so newsy that we are featuring it in a full episode of Karta Clutter. His ideology, the central point of his ideology is anti-Islam. It's, it's to be anti-Islam. We saw another right-wing leader rise just last week in, in Argentina, that is Javier Milei. His ideology was anti-government, anti-government, anti-the state. He wanted to cut the state to half. In this case, in this case, Heath Wilders' ideology is primarily anti-Islam. And that is what his manifestos have been saying since 2006. And I will read some portions of his manifesto to you as we go along. So his ideology, number one, anti-Islam. Number two, anti-EU. In fact, he's promising that once he takes over power, they will order a referendum. They call a referendum, which they will call Nexit, based on Brexit and hoping to get similar results. So anti-Islam, anti-EU, anti-immigration. He wants to close Netherlands' borders and he wants to also expel undocumented aliens and refugees. And he wants no more asylum seekers and no more re refugees. I will give you some quotes from him. And he says, and I quote him, we want less Islam in the Netherlands and we will achieve that through less non-Western immigration and the introduction of a general halt to asylum. That's the new European leader say. Once again, you see with his rise, who are the leaders congratulating him? So all of Europe's right is now lining up to congratulate him. Marine Le Pen from France. And I quote her again. This confirms the growing attachment to the defense of national identities. It is because there are people who refuse to see the national torch extinguished that the hope for change remains alive in Europe. Viktor Orban, the usual suspect, the leader of Hungary, who also does not follow the European, European Union rules on immigration, on asylum, on refugees. He says, and I quote him again, the winds of, the winds of change are here. Islamic civilization is constantly moving towards Europe. Those whom we do not want to let in will have to be stopped at Hungary's western borders. That he said at a public meeting. Italian Deputy Prime Minister, I haven't yet seen, at least we haven't yet found a statement yet from Giorgia Meloni, or I'm, although I'm sure this will come sooner than later. Her deputy, Italian Deputy Prime Minister Matteo Salvini, he's 
he's held he's held the victory victory of our friend and obviously uh, acknowledge that it is sort of similar policies now what is heath builders his party his far right anti islam as i told you he will now be hoping to form a coalition in one of the other parties now how dutch politics works it's quite intricate so i will not go into all the details of that because that gets too cluttered except to say i told you his party got 37 seats the next party got 25 yet another 24 and 20 and the rest are then divided among parties with 5 3 2 1 seats because this is proportionate representation so somebody gets a minimum number of votes nationally can get some seats allocated according to that so i am not getting into, de into details of that if he has to have power he has to form a coalition with others now there are those who will go into a coalition with him there are those who will not go into a coalition with him now there are some parties in the netherlands who said they will not go with him for example the combination of left and labor and the green bloc they've got 25 seats the second largest party their leader frans timmermans has said now is the time to defend democracy that means they are not going to sign up with heert wilders his party yet another party which has 24 seats vbd they are not ruling out a coalition however its leader dilan yesel goz who is a woman leader who expects to be the first woman leader of the netherlands she says her party says that they are open to a coalition with heath wilders his party but they will not give prime ministership to heath wilders and similarly there is another party nsc party of peter omsait dutch names are difficult to pronounce and if you want to see how difficult and how commonly we str struggle with pronouncing them you can also think of some of the south african cricketers who, whose names we struggle with because they are of dutch because they are of dutch ancestry so if i pronounce some wrong my apologies i tried i went to google i tried and i practiced a bit i think i'm getting heath wilders about right but not the rest of them i am not so sure so peter om sites party nsc party has softened its attitude towards heath wilders it has 20 seats and it's open to forming a coalition so once you get this many you can probably form a government in the dutch system now before the parties meet to decide on a coalition they appoint an outsider as a kind of go between that outsider then checks out the views of everybody then helps them set up a coalition it's a bit like it's a bit like in the third front congress party plus third front era when coalitions were to be set against the bjp there always used to be a harpreet singh surjit negotiating with everybody and then helping them decide who the prime minister should be the, the dutch have a system like that established already wilders his own statements i will repeat many of them for you he said also the dutch hope that the people can get their country back together and that we will ensure that the tsunami of asylum seekers and immigration is reduced heert wilders of all the european leaders has particularly targeted muslims and Muslims among the refugees. Now there might be other outsiders who come and settled in in the Netherlands, Western outsiders. But his ire is directed only at Muslims. So another of his statements, another another of his gems, and I quote again: "Asylum seekers feast on delightful cruise ship buffets, while Dutch families have to cut back on groceries." Right now, you might say, "Oh, country with sixty nine thousand dollars per capita income, to, with, would they really need to cut back on groceries?" But this is how populist, populist nationalists, populist nationalists, who build their politics by targeting a community or a category of people. In this case, the community is Muslims, and category of people is asylum seekers and refugees. So, Heert Wilder stands for what? He stands for a ban on Islamic schools, on the Quran. on new mosques on head scarves and all government buildings he says that the quran is as bad as mein kampf and both should be banned you didn't expect to hear that from a european leader from a western european leader and certainly until a few years ago you did not expect a leader like that to be elected but europe is now going through that wave sweden Finland have both have both elected right wing led coalitions. Italy has a very strong right wing led coalition. <laughs> Poland already has a government that does not like immigration and does not like Muslim refugee seekers etc. So this is the wave that that's now growing in Europe. 
Heath Wilders is only the latest example, but he's the most extreme of the lot. Netherlands was a colonial power and all colonial power has a legacy of immigration. The Dutch had colonies in Asia, Indonesia, Indonesia, for example. So a lot of the immigrants in the Netherlands are Indonesian. Suriname in Northern South America was also their colony. In fact, a lot of the native Surinamese, Ruat Gullit, for example, they've been, they've been prominent members of the Dutch national football team. The wave of Muslim refugee asylee immigration, however, started about 30, 40 years back as the Muslim world, Islamic world began to break up. Before that, they got a bunch of immigrants from Turkey and Morocco who had come in looking for, looking for jobs just as Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis go to the Gulf looking for jobs. The difference being when Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Filipinos, Indonesians, Sri Lankans go to the Gulf to do to get jobs there, they do not get citizenship and they don't get voting rights. In any case, in most of those countries, there is no vote anyway. In Europe, they've been able to get naturalized. With, with all of that, it's not as if the Netherlands is being run over by Muslims. Of Netherlands population, just about 5.5%. Anything between 5 to 6% is Muslim. However, there is one very interesting fact. Like other Western European countries, it is a very irreligious country in the sense that people wear their religious very lightly on their sleeves or on their shoulder or carry it very lightly on their shoulders, if at all. If you see, if you see the surveys in the Netherlands, a large part of Dutch people report their religion as no religion. In France, that number might be even higher. That's why when you get even a small percentage of people who are very close to their religion, who look very religious and who look very distinct, it causes a reaction. And that is the reaction and fear that leaders like Heath Wilders then build on. He again tried to write that mood or build on that mood after 9-11 after because there was a debate over integration of Muslims in the Netherlands society. He got 17% votes at one point of time, but in the course of time, things again settled down and thing came, things came back to normal. Then he became more clear on anti-Islamism being central to his, to his agenda. In his 2006 manifesto for 2006 elections, he said, and I quote from it, that Islam is not a religion. Islam is not a religion. It is a, it is instead a totalitarian political ideology with some religious tinges. And then he goes on to say, which prescribes, and I quote again, which prescribes to its supporters a perpetual war until the moment that the whole world is Islamic. That's why, according to his party, Islam must be defined not as a religion, but as a political ideology. Then one more quote from his manifesto, which tells you where he's coming from and which tells you the significance of the rise of a power like him in a mainstream Western European country. And this is, this is an exact quote from his manifesto. Anybody who thinks that Islamization is a matter of just one issue cannot count which means there are many issues. Mass immigration has enormous consequences for all facets of our society. It is a disaster in economic terms. It affects the quality of our education, increases insecurity on the streets, leads to an exodus from our cities, extrudes Jews and gays and rinses women's emancipation through the toilet. Right? Rinses women's emancipation through the toilet. To just highlight one sector, even healthcare is Islamizing rapidly. Muslim women who refuse treatment by male doctors, who do not want to be washed by male nurses, Islamic elderly who claim halal food from cooks in their nursing home, home care workers who have to bring an interpreter with them because the patient only speaks Turkish or Arabic. And who do you think pays for that interpreter? And why is that interpreter necessary anyway? So this is, this is, his is a war. His is a war on the separate identity of the Muslim immigrants in, in Europe, in the Netherlands in this case. And his is also a campaign for homogenization. That is the new populism. It has nothing to do with the old definition of what is left, what is right. Many of these populists, in fact, pick up many of their ideas, their distributive ideas from the left. But as far as their right ideology is concerned, they build it on nationalism, 
religion and also fear of another religion. That is the new ideology. And, and that's the reason I said that some of these leaders are picking up the most extreme aspects from the left and the right ideology.